liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. How are you? Pretty good. Good. Okay. So, the single news topic that I got the most questions about this week... Uh Uh-oh. I already know. (laughs) ...was... What do I think about Will Smith slapping Chris Rock? Yeah. <laughs> it shows just how much Americans really care about Ukrainians. I'm telling you, man, that is, yeah. I haven't seen anybody change their profile picture yet, so I guess <laughs> it's not on that level, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, um, there's got to be some meme related to the slap game in, uh, uh, what, what's oh. the, um, the show? Oh, How I Met Your Mother. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the slap bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't, I don't know why that hasn't made its way into more uh, yeah. profile pictures. Cause this is obviously the most important thing going on in the world. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. I've, I've had to, I've talked about that more than I care to this week. <laughs> yeah. Kind of incredible. So, um, yeah. with, yeah. Uh, with things like, yeah, you know, the president saying that there's going to be a food shortage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of amazing that... Um, but Will Smith slapping Chris Rock was, yeah. was taking learned, the cake. <laughs> I will say, though, I learned um, I learned a little bit about Will Smith and... Uh, so I Jada. Thought, yeah, yeah. I thought uh, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett had divorced years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. So yeah. I was wrong about that. Yeah. Um, obviously. But I, I learned more about their relationship, and I lost a ton of respect for Will Smith. <laughs> yeah, me too. So I actually had the same experience because my initial reaction was, oh, go Will Smith, defend your woman, blah, blah, blah. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, and, not, and I don't have a problem with Chris Rock and I don't have a problem with Chris Rock making the joke like that. No. But uh, you got to know as when you're a comedian on stage making a joke about somebody's wife when the husband's sitting right there, mm-hmm. like that's that's that it won't happen 100 percent of the time. But it can happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, you just have to know that. Yeah. Um, and so I don't. I didn't have a problem with any of them. I thought it was just kind of a funny incident. And the more I learned, I was like, oh, wow, dude. Like, I, I feel bad for Will. I, I, in a way, I feel bad for Will Smith. Yeah. But in another way, I'm like, you kind of did it to yourself, buddy. Like, you should have ditched her a long time ago. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> um, so. I don't, yeah. I don't want to use the word that's popped up a bunch on this podcast. Oh, man. But, um, yeah. I was kind of, I was, I, I was surprised and disappointed. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and by the way, just as another side note, um, it's inexcusable. Like words don't hurt. I'm sorry. You know, oh, like as far the, as Will Smith slapping Chris Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh, although it doesn't seem like re- like it was much of a slap. Yeah. You know, like I really feel like if Will Smith had, had hit Chris Rock, like really hit him, it yeah. would have been. Yeah, there, yeah. I, and have you what, ever seen the slap fight? Um, no. Things. Oh man. Well, you can definitely knock somebody out with a slap. If oh, you I'm hit sure. Them yeah. Um, but it, it's it's inexcusable. But like um, like I've said about the other things going on in the world, it's not without reason. Yeah. Well, and that's that's my thing. Like, I mean. Because that's what I said at the time. I was like, because everybody immediately picks sides. You're either mm-hmm. for Chris Rock or you're for Will Smith and no real middle ground. And I was like, I don't feel that way at all. Like, I mean, I feel like I can still like both these guys yeah. um, given this situation. And I don't think what, I mean, I think what Will Smith did wasn't necessarily right, but I understand it. Yeah. Like, I, mean, yeah. I mean, if somebody was on stage talking about my wife, you know, which the joke wasn't even funny to me. I didn't even get it. I was like, what? And then, I, then when they showed her, I was like, okay, I guess I get it now. But yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, I, from what I hear, Will thought it was funny too. Well, he did. He <laughs> laughed. And then, but yeah, it was one of those he laughed and then saw his wife not laughing. And then <laughs> like, was like, well, gotta I make up for this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, well. So that's our coverage of the Will Smith slap. You, Will Smith gate. <laughs> yeah. Will gate? Will gate. <laughs> slap gate? Slap gate. I like slap gate better. Probably be slap gate. <laughs> Let's go with slap gate. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, we'll have more next week on Slapgate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as, as more de- as more develops, we'll 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 have more coverage. Right. I just I need to do a little more research on yeah. this one. I, I, um, I gotta I gotta the get more background. The, well, the, the, I gotta I gotta do some testing on um you know pounds per square inch of, of force uh, well, applied the, by a slap things like that. The real question is, do you believe it was staged or not? Because I that's the question actually, I've gotten the most. <laughs> honestly, that was my. So I don't know a lot about it. Yeah. Um, I didn't watch the Oscars like most people, um, and because of that, I think my first impression was that it was staged. It was staged. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Well, after watching the, because I didn't watch it live, obviously either. I woke up the next morning to a million Will Smith memes, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, uh, "What happened here?" Yeah. Um, I don't really think it was staged after watching the video because there was just, and granted that all of these guys are actors, so it very easily could have been staged, Mm. but it felt pretty awkward and pretty real when Will Smith was hollering back at him after he slapped him. Yeah. I was like, I don't know. This doesn't really seem staged to me. This feels like this happened. Yeah. Yeah, Maybe. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. It certainly gave um, the Oscars a little bit of a boost, at least in the secondary market, like replay stuff. Yeah. So... Um, and, and probably maybe, more people watch the Oscars than have in a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, or will next time because... Oh, yeah. Yeah, waiting for something like this to happen. Yeah, it's like going to NASCAR, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're waiting for the crash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that most of those events have some sort of crash, no. uh, although it's often not very entertaining as far as I'm concerned. It's mm. a, it's the bad kind of crash. Yeah. yeah. Um. So something that I forgot to mention on the last podcast... Uh, and I almost uploaded the screenshot to the Facebook page as an addendum, but then I thought, well, I'll just bring it up this week. All right. Um, is the uh, have you seen any of the tweets from Selective Service recently? Oh, you sent me that the other day. Yeah, yeah. I, that was. I thought that was pretty. I think they're they're the prime in us, man. Yeah. Um, so those who haven't seen it, and like I actually saw it from the Selective Service account, um, yeah. looking through somebody else's. Twitter account because I don't even know what the password to my account is anymore. It's yeah. been so many years since I logged in. Uh, but um, they're just, uh, you know, kind of hinting about the possibility of uh, upcoming draft. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and for those who don't know, because you may have filled out the paperwork and not even realized uh, what you're doing or don't remember it or whatever, is that every Every man in the United States, every U.S. citizen, male U.S. citizen, has to sign up for Selective Service on their 18th birthday. And it is essentially to put your name in the pool for conscription. Yeah. Um, and uh, Well, and the, the thing that you sent me, I'm pretty sure was saying that. So it, even if you apply for a conscientious objector status, mm-hmm. like they'll still find a job for you. <laughs> yeah, well, it... It said either that or they would ship you off to a camp. It, it was oh, it was, was, oh, was that the other <laughs> option? Yeah. That, my bad. It was kind of hard to read between the lines because they said that they would work with uh, FEMA. Oh, um, that's right. Yeah, with the people that uh, uh, that were conscientious objectors, yeah. and so like it wasn't my first impression, but there were a bunch of people that when I mentioned it to them, their first impression was like for like labor camps, or something. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, I guess for. Because hmm, for some reason, FEMA is associated with uh, FEMA camps. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's it said that if you um, uh, if you were a conscientious objector, that they would work with FEMA um, to, I guess, to find something suitable for you. Yeah. So, yeah, it's either. <laughs> go, go, it's, the, it's go either the war putting you into, into a camp or finding some other job that was acceptable yeah. to support the war effort which is, is stupid as far as i'm concerned anyway because if you have conscientious objector status it, it seems to me that your objection is to the war in general and you wouldn't you wouldn't accept any job that supported the war yeah either not just non-combat yeah exactly <laughs> So yeah. I, I don't know, but the the worrying part is just that they're throwing this out there. Yeah, yeah. What do they know that we don't? <laughs> yeah, because we haven't had a draft obviously since Vietnam, and it was probably th- one of the most opposed th- things that happened at least in this country. Yeah. During that period. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. So the you know it it certainly suggests that the U.S. government has an interest in. Um, the war in Ukraine 
becoming something bigger. Yeah. Now, you could also say that it just means that they're preparing for the possibility that it becomes something bigger, I guess. But to me, it suggests that they want it to. Because this could be shut down. This could have been prevented in the first place, like very easily. Yeah, We've Um, talked about it on the podcast over and over again, how easy it would have been, especially in the beginning, to have mm -hmm. squashed this. Yeah. And I think if a lot of those routes were taken even now, this could be squashed. Yeah. Well, and that's what's going on there right now, um, is that there does seem to be some progress made in uh, negotiations between Ukraine and Russia. Um, Russia has said that Ukraine seems willing to uh, agree to some of the the primary terms that Russia is asking. And I, I, you know, I keep saying that essentially what they're what Russia has been asking for is the status quo anyway. Yeah. I mean, Crimea is Russian. Period. <laughs> it, it just is. It has been Russian since Catherine the Great took it from the Ottomans. Yeah. It's it's Russian. Yeah. Um. It was uh you know handed over to Ukraine when it was part of the Soviet Union when they all answered to Moscow anyway by Khrushchev, but it was more of a symbolic gesture, wasn't it? Yeah, anyway. Well, it, he was shoring up support because this was after Stalin died. Yeah. Um. And Khrushchev had taken power, and he was, um, he was just trying to make sure that he had support of like regional governor kind of. Yeah. Positions. I don't know what you call them in the Soviet Union, but that that kind of role. Yeah. Um, and uh, and of course, the the people that he gave it to were Russians. Anyway. Yeah. And uh, and Ukraine answered to Moscow at the time. It was not its own nation. So. I don't know. I, I think that that makes a difference. It's never. Crimea has never historically been a part of Ukraine um, in terms of its national identity. Yeah. And it has for centuries been a part of Russia in terms of its national identity, identity. So, and the people want to be Russian. Yeah. Right. Which is probably the bottom line. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, as for the Donbass republics, uh, they're more trouble than they're worth to Ukraine anyway. Yeah. All they're going to do is cost money. Yeah. Yeah. Should flying missiles over there at them, right? <laughs> I mean, you may as well just let them just yeah. let them go. You, I mean, that, do you, Ukraine you want to fight been, over that area for how long? Yeah, I mean, well, that's what I was going to say. Is I mean, they've that's been unsettled territory since what 2014 or something. Um, yeah, they the right after the uh, coup in 2014, the Don those two republics, Donetsk and Luhansk, um, declared independence from the central government of Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, because they didn't vote for that government. Yeah. They voted for the government that got overthrown. Yeah. They didn't want to be part of the new government. Yeah. And so. yeah, so they've been fighting. I mean, there's been... Ever since. Yeah, like, there's yeah. been a fight there ever since. Um, And what, you know, you, you get a lot of talk about, uh, of course, before this thing started, about Russians massing troops uh, near the Ukraine border. And, you know, 125,000 Russian troops near the Ukraine border. Um, What you didn't hear about is... Uh, in the months before that, Ukraine had massed 60,000 troops on the border of the Donbass republics. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So they were preparing something. Those forces, by the way, um, by most accounts, have have been essentially encircled and more or less wiped out. Uh, oh, really? Or at least it's it's a matter of time Yeah. Um, before they're wiped out. And... Uh, I mean, that's probably something we're talking about right there is, and then we'll get into the other lies, <laughs> yeah. um, is all this reporting about how Ukraine's doing such a great job and, uh, in holding off Russia, um, reading military strategists and listening to people like Douglas McGregor, who's, you know, Colonel Douglas McGregor is also a military strategist yeah. who, by the way, um, I haven't gotten to hear his, uh, the Scott Horton interview of Douglas McGregor, but Dave Smith had Douglas McGregor on this last week too. Very good episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah Highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, and uh, like congrats to both of those guys. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, um, particularly Scott, because Douglas McGregor said some really nice things about Scott Horton at the end of the Dave Smith. He episode. did. So, yeah. Um, that it was just nice. That's to high hear. praise. Yeah. I mean, I, I took that as very high praise. Yeah. It was nice to hear. Yeah. Um, 
But anyway, uh, Douglas McGregor and other military strategists who have been talking about this, and there's a, a blog called Moon of Alabama that I've been reading for years um, that is, uh, it's a German intelligence officer, I think, that runs it, that writes the articles yeah. primarily, or the blogs. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know exactly his relationship, but that, but the, or his former occupation, but it's something like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, they all are more or less saying the same thing. Um, and if you you can find some French reports about the troop movements that seem to be at least reasonably accurate. Um, and the strategists are saying that, no, uh, Ukraine is not doing a great job holding off the Russians. Uh, the Russians have done exactly what they wanted to do. Um, which was to uh, to push forces in close to Kiev to force the Ukrainian army to stay put around Kiev to protect the capital. Yeah. While the Russian forces um, did what they wanted in the east and the south. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with far less resistance because the the main part of the army needed to stay near the capital. Yeah. So they essentially like stuck them in play. Like if you're familiar with like old style combat stuff, where you know you'd have your um, infantry groups that would try and stick other infantry groups in place so that they can be flanked. Yeah. And that's similar. I mean, it's maneuver warfare. Yeah. Um, it, it's similar to what's happening. Shift your here, focus so. here so we can move people here. Yeah. Just shifting people. Or, yeah. Trying yeah. to control where your enemy's putting their troops by putting yours in certain places. Right. And yeah. very Sun Tzu thing, like, you know, attack where they're weakest. Yeah. Um, yeah. They and, can't be everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, the the Russians have uh, now the the fierce fighting in Mariupol um, really seems to be about the Azov Battalion. That is the the home territory of the Azov Battalion, which is one of the neo Nazi groups. Okay. Um, and, well, that clarifies uh, some stuff because there's been a ton of talk about Mariupol on the news, mm-hmm. but nothing about the Azov Battalion. <laughs> uh, well, no, that is the 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 home territory of the Azov Battalion. I mean, a lot um, of talk about the atrocities that's went on there, and, mm-hmm. and and I don't necessarily not believe some of that. I mean, mm-hmm. it looks. I mean, I've, I've I've seen more video this week of what's going on in Mariupol than I have some of the other weeks where there was claiming all this stuff was going on, but seeing the same video over and over again. Yeah. That hasn't been the case in Mariupol. Like, I've actually seen, feel like, pretty solid coverage of what's going on there. And it does, it looks bad. Yeah. Well, and uh, it seems that the, the Azov Battalion is like um, the stories that you heard about Japanese soldiers in World War II. Yeah. Um, just like fanatical, will not surrender Very under any, yeah. any circumstances, fighting to their last breath kind of thing. And so it, yeah. it's kind of forced a, yeah. a brutality there that yeah. um, they, you hate to see. Oh, yeah. But, um, but again, by the accounts of most of these strategists, like that fight's essentially over too. Yeah, it's in. They're in mop up phase essentially. Yeah. Um. There's a few holdouts still, and well, I mean, the, the Russians essentially control. Destroyed though. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I mean, it's completely leveled. Yeah. Like I mean. Um. And uh, you know, you can believe what you want about some of these attacks, like uh, the, the theater attack. Um. Who knows who's responsible for that in the end? Yeah. Uh, it could be that the Russians uh, blew up the theater, but they claim that they didn't, and they've been pretty open about claiming. What they've done, yeah. yeah. Claiming what they've done, um, yeah. Stories of people that escaped Mariupol into the Russian side, which means that they're, you know, ethnic Russians and align themselves with the Russians anyway, yeah. um, have said that the Azov Battalion was preventing people from leaving, mm-hmm. um, and that they had packed ethnic Russians into that theater and blew it up themselves. Really? Yeah. So who knows if it's true or not? I mean, yeah. it, it's. Anybody's it, guess. Yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty terrible though. But um, the that big army that was on the borders with the Donbass republics, the sixty thousand there, um, the the strategists really agree that this group has been essentially surrounded by Russian forces, and that they will either need to um, surrender or they will get wiped out. Really. And uh, so, particularly with that, that means that uh, Ukraine has been mostly demilitarized. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> So they may as well agree to that one. I mean, certainly Russia has has um, done enough damage to the Ukrainian military. And, of course, you know, they were hitting um, anti-air sites initially. 
Um, and then, uh, and recently they've been hitting, um, like fuel depots yeah. and stuff like that. So, uh, what, um, Bernard at, at, uh, moon of Alabama was saying is that they have, you know, they, they managed to fix the Ukrainian army in position around the capital. And then, um, now they've blown up all the, the fuel depots, their energy resources. And so now the Ukrainian army has no mobility. Yeah. So now they're stuck there anyway. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, and that this is this is uh, this this is a war that is essentially over. Yeah. Um, or at least that the outcome is clear. Yeah. Yeah. Without some other kind of intervention, and yeah. we don't want that. No. I mean, you can feel bad for the Ukrainians all you want. Like maybe even worse yeah. for them than Chris Rock or Will Smith or whoever you feel bad for in that situation. But yeah. like we do not need to get involved. No. Yeah. That's that's. Very, very dangerous territory if if we enter into this. Yeah. So especially in a war that's basically played itself out. Mm-hmm. I mean, from what I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to have. Um, you know, the so I have uh obligated myself to write a letter um that you can send to congressmen, senators, etc. Yeah. Uh on up, I guess. Um Asking that we, the United States, stop giving military aid to Ukraine. Yeah. Um, I haven't written it. I've got a whole bunch of voice memos. Uh, so stuff I, you want to say? Yeah. So I, I ought to, uh, you know, I should have put it together today, but I was, I ended up getting really busy. Um, some work stuff came up, and I had like no free time. But um, anyway, um. You know, the the crux of it really is that all we do by, and I guess this is what we talked about last podcast, all we do by giving them military aid is prolong the war. Yeah. Um, we're not going to, we're not changing the outcome that way. Yeah. Uh, the only way we're changing the outcome is by getting involved. And there is, you cannot make me care enough about the Ukrainians to risk. No. The entire planet. Exactly. <laughs> Particularly our side of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I'm not risking the whole Northern Hemisphere for the Ukrainians. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, it's not that I don't care about the Ukrainians. No. I just care more about me. Yeah. <laughs> I, absolutely. I am self-interested. Yeah. Uh, I want my family and the people that I'm close to that I actually know yeah. to survive. Absolutely. So, um, and, but the, yeah, the point is that by giving the military aid, you're just encouraging them to persist. Yeah. Um, in a war that they can't win anyway. And the longer it goes on, the more people die. Yeah. And so the most responsible thing, uh, the thing that the U.S. should be doing, um, is encouraging negotiations from both sides and to bring, uh, to encourage them to find a deal that is acceptable to both nations. Yeah. Um, in their own national interest, not ours. Yeah. Uh, and to sign a deal and be done with it yeah. and end the conflict. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with Ukraine Ukraine just staying neutral because yeah. that's the big thing I've heard this week is like mm-hmm. that that may be the future here. And I think that's a fine one. Like I don't see any problem with that if they just became Switzerland and was just like neutral. Yeah. Um um, and then, of course, the, the, you know, the reports, they're trying to turn the reports now that, uh, you know, the Ukrainians fought so well around Kiev that the Russians are withdrawing, that they've been defeated in Kiev. But again, those military strategists are saying, no, they're just redeploying their troops. Yeah. Like, they've, they've accomplished what they wanted around Kiev. They had no, they never had any interest in, in evicting the Ukrainian government. They're yeah. not trying to take over Ukraine. Yeah. Unlike what the news has said. Oh yeah. Um, they just want, they just want the buffer. Yeah. They don't want to be fighting about Crimea internationally anymore. And they don't want, um, uh, weapons on their border army border. on their border. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, they, they just want the buffer. Yeah. Well, what do you think of all of this news about the, um, that, that Putin's getting bad information. Like that's the big thing I've heard the past couple of days is the people around Putin are lying to him and that about how well this war is going and all of that. Um, I think if they're telling him that the war is going well, they're not lying to him. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so, 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 so you think we're being lied to. <laughs> I, I do. Yeah. I, I, you know, 
Yeah. Yes. That's, that's yes, been, that's what I think. The reason I ask is because that's been uh, big all over the news to pass, particularly yesterday, mm-hmm. where they were um, they were just saying that, uh, and that they, and in fact, they had some guy on saying that this was a way to try to get in Putin's head mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. Well, that completely contradicts what they were saying last week, which, which was that Putin was angry with all his staff because the war was going so poorly and so on. So, yeah. you know, I don't know. Pick one. Yeah. It just, uh, just goes to show that there's just a lot of bad information out there, though. Well, that's certainly true. And uh, like I said, I mean, I do think that the U.S. has not has wanted this war. And um, I can't even entirely explain why. Like, part of it is just that there are a lot of people that profit greatly over this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and well, then there's a lot of people that justify their occupation through like their jobs yeah. by this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, One of them being the president, by the way, yeah. who has used this war to, to every bad thing that's going on right now in this mm-hmm. country. He has found a way to blame it on this war. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, inflation like that's every time inflation comes up, he goes back to, to this war. Right. Um, well, I mean, that's, you know, we, we should get more into that, but there are a couple other things I, I'd like to hit first. Um, so I recommend everybody read the Pentagon's new map uh, because it'll go a long way towards explaining like why we get involved in some of the conflicts or why we push for some of the conflicts that we do. Um, and one of the shifts in uh, in policy in Pen- in the Pentagon over the last twenty years or whatever is to try and get back to a great power conflict kind of uh, footing. Yeah. Um, because at the end of the Cold War, when the Soviet Union dissolved, uh, they didn't have anybody to focus on. And that's when we like spread out into all these little um, insurgents wars all over the Middle East and so forth, fighting with tribesmen. Yeah. Um, but it just doesn't result in the kind of uh, buildup of the military that they want. Them big ticket items. Yeah. Um, and so they have been trying to push back into... A, a great con, or, you know, great power conflict with Russia and China, um, and we've seen at least over the last six years uh, a bunch of major events that were blamed on the Russians um, that turned out not to be true. Yeah, and um, I mean, just just think about it. you had the whole Russia Gate scandal uh, over the twenty sixteen election. Yeah, um, and I know that like I got. I've got a family member out there that's going to probably turn off this podcast because I said that it was a scandal and a, and it's a hoax. Yeah. Um, but the evidence yeah. is what the evidence is. Yeah. Like, um, I don't the, know what you want from me. You know, the, the only people who have really, well, even they didn't get in, nobody's really gotten into any trouble for this, but, um, you do remember there, uh, was an FBI guy who, um, who changed, who edited an email from the intelligence community, uh, to, so that they could get an excuse for the surveillance to begin with. Yeah. Um, that they, that they've just been lying all the way through the, you you know, you got your Peter Strucks and, um, and then of course, uh, Comey and McCabe and like all these people were involved in various ways, um, to, to maintain, um, this investigation, uh, John Brennan, you know, um, and these are all terrible people. Not to say that the our, our former president is a terrible person too, because I think he, <laughs> he he's also a terrible person. But um, it was essentially a bunch of fabricated stuff to create a scandal around the president to prevent him from any kind of detente with Russia, and it worked. And and it wasn't just about detente with Russia; it was about you know ending wars um, in yeah, the Middle East Trump and so forth. Trump talked a lot about, you know, they lied you into Iraq. Yeah. And <laughs> like if you he said that, if you think you can't think of a reason why these people would care about that, like the, this, this generates a lot of responsibility and, um, notoriety and influence for all of them. Um, these wars. Yeah. Uh, like the FBI, um, with their counterterrorism division, that they, they've moved outside the borders of the United States, right? Yeah. The FBI is now an international um, law enforcement organization, um, and they've gotten a tremendous amount of money as uh, um, 
as a result of the terror wars. Yeah. They didn't want that to end. Oh, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I don't even, there's no even reason to even point out why the CIA benefits from any of this, right? <laughs> um, and the other intelligence uh, agencies. So they had a real interest in keeping this stuff going on. Um, and they did what they felt that they needed to do to uh, prevent a president who had the power to end a lot of this stuff yeah. from doing that. Um, and they said that they wanted to hamstring uh, uh, President Trump to prevent him from um, executing the, his foreign policy plans, and they succeeded. Yeah, and that's something I've always kind of said to people who are just like diehard Trump haters. I was like, <laughs> just remember the the intelligence agencies and all these the group inside the government. <laughs> they don't hate Trump for the same reasons you hate him. <laughs> yeah, you hate him because of the mean tweets and whatever. <laughs> they hate him because they know what he's going to do foreign policy wise. Um, and some of that stuff was going to be good. Not all of it. There, you know, yeah. there, there were things I disagreed with. Yeah. Um, well, he left the Iran nuclear deal. I think that that was a horrible decision. Worst thing he did in office, probably. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but but there there were but there were leaving Syria, leaving Afghanistan. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, well, he was asking why in the world are we even fighting in Somalia? Yeah, that's a good yeah, question, right? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, he talked about no. leaving NATO. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, yeah, that would have saved us a big headache right now. Exactly. Think, um, imagine if that was if that had been the case. If Trump had mm-hmm. won a second term, where we would be right now with this deal with Ukraine and Russia? Yeah, like it would be a totally different scenario. Yeah, but for two years you had the media telling you that the that there had been a soft coup executed executed from moscow yeah where they had control of the president of the united states that he was a traitor and uh and you know uh pro-russian i um, just can't imagine that, what putin feels like when he hears that because he's uh, sitting there like dude i wish like, yeah, i <laughs> wish i had that kind of power exactly um <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, it was like uh, this time when I, I was at a bar um, and um, this girl said something that gave me the impression that she thought I was a lot younger than I was. Oh, and yeah. I was like, how old do you think I am? And she said, 25. And I was <laughs> like, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> thank you. yeah I, I wish that that were true. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, the and then the whole, like, the story was that the Russians had interfered in our election to the point that they got that president elected. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's a lot of which, people out there that still believe that, by I know. the way. Um, because how could uh, somebody as terrible as Donald Trump defeat somebody as terrible as Hillary Clinton? Yeah, exactly. Um, but then, you know, right behind that was the Bounty Gate scandal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where where we were ready to go to war with Russia on the rumor that they were incentivizing soldiers from another nation to kill Americans. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Which kind of makes you wonder, like, like when you really start hashing that out, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, like, <laughs> but it turned out to be complete bunk. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. The whole thing was just made up. It was based off of one incredibly unreliable source, and only one intelligence agency th- seemed to think that it was worth repeating. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you know, and it was obviously... Like, why would people from... over there need an incentive to shoot at us? Like, <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> I mean, exactly. Like, well, I mean, come on, guys. Like, we have give them plenty of reason to shoot at us. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> Russians don't need to add to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is absolutely true. Um, and, and so, you know, there, there's one more thing. Well, the Russians are paying people to kill American soldiers. Yeah. You know, and that gets people fired up. Oh, it did. I remember um, at the time that was a big deal. And, but it was a lie. Oh yeah. It was just a lie. And it was another leak from the intelligence community, by the way. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, just what, a couple of months ago, um, they were invading Kazakhstan Yeah. and they were never going to leave. Yeah. Remember? I do. Um, yeah. Sullivan saying, oh, well, once you invite the Russians in, you can't get rid of them and all yeah. that stuff, which also <laughs> which, countered which the, the argument that it was an invasion. I was going to say, kind of a key in. point there, invite them in. They were invited in there. Yeah. Um, but then the Russians left 10 days later. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like they, they came were. in, they did what they were asked to do, they left. Exactly. It was yeah. over in no time. Well, um, And then, like, this came up right before the election in 2020. Uh, but it's come back up again, yes, which is has. the whole Biden laptop thing. Exactly. Um, Hunter Biden's laptop, which remember we were told over and over again when that came out that it was Russian disinformation. Yeah. And I'm telling you that one from the word go, I was like, I'm sorry. Like yeah. we can't just blame everything on Russia. Like mm-hmm. at some point, I really feel like that was a point where the, that play started to lose some of its 
because a lot of the people I talked to at that time were like, we're going with Russia again. Like that's yeah. the, that, that's always the excuse, particularly by the Democrats, it mm-hmm. seems. Well, and now the New York Times has admitted that the Biden laptop was genuine. Yeah, yeah. Because it was. Yeah. <laughs> like it, um, and it should also point out that there's a whole lot of stuff about the corruption within Ukraine and in China yeah. uh, related to that laptop. So, um, you know, do you think that the American people... Uh, might not have turned out in record, num- record numbers to vote for Joe Biden if they had known that this stuff was true. Yeah, and I'll tell you something that's really crazy about that incident in particular that hasn't happened before, and I don't not that I know have since. Um, you couldn't even share the link. Yeah, to the news article by the, the New York New- Post. Yeah. Like, uh, which yeah. is, I think, like the third biggest paper in the it's US. It's definitely or a like major that. paper. Yeah. yeah. Um, which. I'm telling you, that's that's creepy beyond creepy. You want to talk mm-hmm. about like using like like red lines as far as just like being able to just turn something off. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, um, I, and I don't care if it's misinformation or not. I mean, clearly this mm-hmm. turned out to be true. But even if it hadn't been, you shouldn't be able to just completely turn off information that way. Yeah. Like, well, who think- are you going to give that power to and trust them to ensure that 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 they're not going to use that nefariously? Yeah. Think about that in comparison to the Steele dossier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which exactly. Was widely disseminated by major news outlets. Yeah. And that turned out to be a complete fabrication. Absolutely. Absolutely. But they didn't have any problem with but that they, stuff being they, out there. There wasn't no, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, banning that link. Yeah. So, um, so, so the there has been there has been a real concerted effort, it seems to me, to get the American people to think of Russia as an enemy over a period of many years. Yeah. Now, um, and uh, to get them to go along with the idea of being conscripted. <laughs> yeah. potentially yeah. to go fight Russia. And I do think that there there are people in the government in this country that think that what we need to do that are afraid of having any kind of near peer power. Yeah. Um and uh they see the influence that Russia wields um very locally to Russia right. but sees that as a threat to the United States. As Scott Horton said in a speech to the um, New Jersey Libertarian Party something along the lines of like um, we're essentially having a border dispute with Russia 6,000 miles east of New Jersey. Yeah, <laughs> right. that's a good way to put it. <laughs> um, and there's, like, we shouldn't have any particular interest there. Yeah. I, it's not our place to to determine what goes on anywhere and everywhere all over the world. Yeah. Um, and who's in power where. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, the Biden saying that... that um, Putin should be removed from power or shouldn't be in power or whatever. Yeah. Uh, however, they're spinning what he said now. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's a that's a real threat coming from the United States. The United States has pla- replaced many oh, <laughs> a national yes, leaders. Yes, they have. Yeah. Um, and it never works out very well. So I don't know why well, we no, want to do it again. I was but, fixing to say, um, who are you going to replace him with? Like, you really think whoever comes after Putin is going to be better? Yeah. Especially after the way we've acted the past two decades. Mm-hmm. Like, you really think that the next person, like, if we were to have him removed and somebody else was to show up, that they're going to be more friendly to us? I don't, I doubt it. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I doubt it too. Uh, I mean, I think that the, like, at least one of the people that was in the running is Alexei Navalny. Yeah. Um, and I, when he, when the whole poison lie, yeah. I, I will say, I, I'm pretty sure that that is a fabrication as well. Yeah. Um, came up about Alexei Navalny. I was looking into this guy and I can't remember the details now, but I remember thinking like, this guy is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Why would we want him in charge? Right. <laughs> I mean, it can't be any better than well, Putin. I, I just... And kind of the point I'd like to make as far as that goes is the, the Russian people aren't exactly our allies at this point. With everything we've done the past mm-hmm. two decades to Russia... Russian people aren't friendly to us, so they're going to support somebody that's not as friendly to us. Yeah, and, well, and that, maybe to, that's just a guess, but um, I mean, they, you know, they said that uh, the American press is saying that Putin um, it, that this is very unpopular, and they're focusing on protests in Russia because there are protests in Russia. There are protests, the yeah, um, and uh, that um, that the Russian people are very unhappy with Putin about this war. But the polls coming out of Russia 
from as close to independency as you can get. Yeah. Anywhere, really, not just Russia. Yeah. Um, are saying that Putin's popularity is soaring right now. Yeah. They, they aren't unhappy with him over this fight. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, I go back to Bush nine eleven, man. Yeah. Like Bush was elected on the narrowest of margins, mm -hmm. but easily won a second term, and it was because the country rallied around him after nine eleven. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a phenomenon. Like that's mm -hmm. real, and that's what worries me about Biden even though I don't think Biden's going to make it that far. Mm -hmm. um, I, I still don't think he finishes his first term. Yeah. Well, but, he says he's not running for re-election. And he's, he's pretty, yeah, he said he's not going to rerun. But he's still, like, trying to lay the groundwork for the next Democrat, you know. So I, yeah. I just, I worry about a, a war just for that, just to rally behind the, the man. Well, I, I think that I think that the real concern isn't the president. It's those uh, unelected officials that are really making decisions behind the scenes yeah. that survive from uh, administration to administration and yep. are locked in and incredibly influential. And yeah. th those are the people that I really think are calling the shots in this country. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, there are a number of them that really believe that the U S is the U S's responsibility or duty to control the world, yeah. to be the lead of the new world order. Yeah. Um, and and you hear that kind of thing come out in speeches from time to time, but like it, it's serious. Like there's a lot of a, a lot of people in government that are entrenched in government that believe that um, that the new world order is a thing and that the it should be U.S. led. Yeah. Um, and that means that they want to control what's going on all over the world. Yeah. And um, and Russia in that regard is something of a threat. Oh, absolutely. Um, and. Uh, and I, I think that there are people that think, and okay, and so here's here's your strategery yeah. a little bit. I, I do think that there's an idea by these people that they um, that the two biggest threats are Russia and China, and that Russia is the weaker but the biggest threat. Yeah. And so the idea is to take out Russia. Yeah. And then to take out China. Yeah. And the reason Russia is the bigger threat is because they have a much larger nuclear arsenal. Yeah. Um, but they are a weaker country they're weaker economically yeah. they're you know they're weaker in terms of population they're they're weaker in a number of ways yeah um so i i think that there is an idea that they're that they're going to somehow finagle these little conflicts into a, a war between the u.s and russia and take out russia yeah and then they can f shift their focus completely onto china well, my worry is is that we're pushing China and Russia closer together. We definitely are. <laughs> to make them better allies. Yeah. Um, um, and, I mean, I don't think there's a lot of disputing that that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is how's that going to play into the future, you yeah. know? Um, and then, uh, so, back around to some of the things that are going on, that, like the economic stuff that I'd like to talk about related to this, because we, we... Yeah, there's something I want to ask you yeah, about. Yeah, we've jabbered on for a while. Go ahead, then. Yeah. Start with your question. Um, so, uh, have you heard anything as far as with the ruble what they're doing as far as pegging it back to the gold standard um no i haven't um i heard that they were going to set up a swift like system for other countries to uh pay them in rubles i also heard that they agreed with um germany to allow germany to pay for energy in euros really uh, yeah because um, I, I saw yesterday something else that they were wanting all of their everything to be bought through their currency now. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what they yeah. had been saying. Yeah. Um, now, there's uh, I, I think this is one of those things that um, that really backfired uh, yeah. for the U.S. I, I think. Well, I don't even know. Maybe they just didn't ever think that it was a, that, that there was a threat that anything might replace the dollar as the um I think it. I think it, it, I think it was arrogance, just arrogancy. Yeah, like, hubris, right? Like, yeah. um, and by doing this, by trying to cut off Russia economically, um, the U.S. has sent a signal out to the entire world that if they deal in dollars, mm. and they upset the U.S., that okay. the U.S. can end their economic livelihood. Yeah. And so there has been a move away from the dollar as the reserve currency not as not officially not officially but a lot of countries especially Are countries that to tend to be at it, odds yeah. with the u.s like china and so forth have unloaded some of their dollars and picked up other currencies yeah. and of course uh saudi arabia said that they would accept um they they would sell chinese oil and yuan yeah 
Yeah. Um, which that they've never dealt in anything other than the dollar either. Yeah. Um, and using losing the dollar as the petroleum currency goes a long yes. way towards unseating the dollar as the reserve currency. Oh yeah. And, and this uh, is one we brought on directly ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and, and besides the fact that, uh, I did, I should have pulled the clip. Um, I, I meant to, and I, then I forgot. Um, but Biden saying directly that, um, that these sanctions don't just affect Russia, that they affect everybody. Yeah. They affect Europe, that they affect the U S and this is one of the, you know, we, we've, we've argued against sanctions over and over again on this podcast because it doesn't hurt the people that it's intended to target ever. Yeah. Um, it hurts the, the people, the, that are dependent on them. Yeah. Um, Putin ain't going to have no food shortages. Yeah. <laughs> but there's something different about this one because us, us cutting Iran out of the economic system didn't have a, um, a noticeable difference on the U S economy. Yeah. But cutting out a country like Russia, um, that provides energy and food, yeah. like energy for your machines and energy for your people. Yeah. Um, cutting them out of the economic system is definitely having a noticeable effect oh, yeah. on the U.S. economy. And while Biden and Jen Psaki and the leaders of the Pentagon and so forth, like while them paying uh, another couple of dollars for gas, you know, them their budget's going up by a couple hundred dollars a month for uh, food and, and fuel doesn't have a huge impact on their lifestyle. Yeah. But there's a whole lot of people around this country that that's make or break. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, absolutely. And uh, this is like we haven't had a real cost that like an obvious cost associated with war in a long time. Yeah. Uh, I hope that that becomes a thing that people rally around to try and get us to to stop this. Well, but, and what's crazy about it to me is like the even when we were implementing this stuff, we knew this wasn't going to stop the war. Yeah, like well, the, the no, argument, they, they originally said that they it was a deterrent. Yeah, a deterrent. Well, yeah, they talked about it as a deterrent before the war. But yeah. once he went in, there was no question that, mm -hmm. oh, well, now that we've done all of this, he's going to pull back. That was never yeah. even talked about. Well, it was just they wanted to punish. It was always about punishment, yeah. not about actually changing anything. Yeah. Well, I think that the question that, that the press corps should be asking Biden right now is that what is the goal that you hope to achieve through these sanctions? Yeah. Um, and whatever that goal is, do you think it's worth starving Americans for? Yeah. Because he said that oh. there will be a food shortage. Now, yeah. I don't think that there's any real reason to panic here. Um, well, I don't think that there's <laughs> reason to panic, but you're going to see it on your shelves. We, yeah. we already saw it on our shelves during COVID. Like, it can yeah, happen. Yeah, it was a different kind of problem, though. It was a different kind of problem, but it was still... The supply chain is a very finicky thing. Yeah, that's true. Um, And and what we're playing games messing with it. That's what mm -hmm. we did during COVID. And this is no... It's different, but it's the same in many ways. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure I'm not the first person to point this out, Um, but what triggered the French Revolution, where a whole lot of aristocrats lost their heads, yeah. was when people couldn't afford bread. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you're right. I mean, that's... And you, you're, you're, we're heading down that path here. Yeah. Like, um, and, I'm and not that's, advocating cutting people's heads off. No, and... Clear, but and, I, and the, this the, is the, the thing point, that triggered it. The point that would, I would make about that is that it wasn't that there were shortages of it. It's that the price goes up because mm -hmm. that may very well be what we look at here is where your shelves are full, but nobody can afford what's on them. Yeah. Um, because, and I'm watching that every day, like prices are going mm -hmm. up constantly. Yeah. People can only adjust so much. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and, and, but the question should be to the president, like you've imposed these sanctions and they've even said that even if Russia leaves Ukraine, that they're going to keep the sanctions. Yeah. You, <laughs> you've yeah. heard them so say what's, that what's too. The, so, the, so yeah. Yeah. The, you took away the incentive for them to leave. Like if you think the sanctions yeah. are doing anything about, uh, you know, to encourage Russia to end their war yeah. then telling them that ending the war doesn't end the sanctions doesn't takes yeah. away that incentive. So, the, the, at this, this point, you're just being just, mean to be mean. Yeah. But you're not, and you recognize though, that you're not just it hurts being mean both to sides. Russians. Yeah. It hurts you're being both mean sides. to Americans and Europeans as well. Absolutely. And so what is it that you hope to achieve 
that is worth creating food store uh, shortages in the United States. What do you think you're going to do to Russia? Yeah. That is worth creating food shortages in the United States. Yeah. That's worth starving or, or uh, creating malnutrition issues in the United States to your own people. Yeah. What is it that no, you want to nobody, achieve? Nobody wins here because it's, it does the same thing to the Russians that it does to us. Like mm -hmm. there's, and it's, and none of the people in power are going to feel anything from it. Yeah. I mean, it's not like Putin and his oligarchs are going to be, have Until the shortages. guillotines roll up. Well, that, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, yeah, I, I don't, uh, I don't understand the point of this. Um, it seems like we have... Uh, well, I don't know if you've heard our president talk, but I don't think he understands it either. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Uh, mumbly Joe. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. One of, the, <laughs> one of the funniest things I heard on uh, Part of the Problem recently was um, Dave saying, you know, Joe Biden, you, you've heard of Joe Biden and, yeah. and, and Robbie saying, yeah, that's the guy that's on television mumbling all the time, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's the guy. That's, that's the one. Yeah, that's the guy. Yep. <laughs> uh, man, I, I, it had... That is one of the things that has uh, deterred me from yeah. getting clips of Joe Biden is that he frequently mumbles to a degree that the clips aren't any good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't even clip him. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know. But uh, just like uh, replacing Putin, I don't know if what comes next is any better. No, I don't. I, I guarantee you it's not. Yeah. Like there's there's no way we end up with the unless, you know, uh, somehow a libertarian was able to run the table here. Yeah. That's, well, j just everybody remember that in 2024. Yeah, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Um, we should have a good libertarian candidate in 2024. I I expect a good libertarian candidate in 2024. So yeah, um, just, and we live in a crazy world. The whole like, well, libertarian can't win. I know that odd. The, it's stacked against us, and and this, that, and the other. But we live in a crazy world, man. Donald yeah. Trump was president. Yeah, he shouldn't have won. He should not have won. Like that was it. The the whole run up to that was just crazy it could happen again with a better candidate mm -hmm. like i mean to say it's impossible it's not you know yeah well I, people just need to get out of that mindset exactly um, the, the there's no sense in voting for a side so that the other side doesn't win exactly it, that doesn't actually accomplish anything because yeah. even if your side wins you kind of lose you didn't yeah. vote for that guy. You voted against the other guy. So you're not real thrilled about the guy you voted for either. Exactly. Like find somebody that you're excited about. That's yeah. where your vote should go. That's what voting is all about. Yeah. It's not about picking the lesser of two evils. It's about supporting something. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and if you lose, you lose. And that sucks. I mean, I, I, I could sit here for the next five minutes and be really critical of democracy generally. But, <laughs> um, but if you, if you buy into democracy, then voting for somebody because you don't want their opponent to win doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's voting out of fear. Yeah. And that's, that's not the way to go. The state like, of fear. Exactly. Um, I don't know. I guess I, I don't think I have anything more to say. Do you, is there something no. more that you wanted to talk about? Well, I don't know. I mean, I did want to mention that, um, so there's a bill in Congress right now to tax, um, unrealized gains. Oh yeah. This is, this is out there again. So we've talked about this on the podcast before. I think actually, I don't mm -hmm. remember for sure, but I feel like we probably I talked we about did. this. Um, we, and, which is, and that's what it, it essentially states that, um, if you have, uh, stock values or, or holdings, yeah. um, that the values go up, yeah. even if you don't cash in, you have to pay uh, Tax taxes on, on the, on the potential increase. of, on the increase. Right. Um, and the reason, the, the reason I want to talk about is that what they're trying to do is find a way to tax these, these billionaires like, mm -hmm. like Elon Musk and, and, um, all of these guys, they want to find a way to, cause what they're do what these guys are doing is they're not, they don't really earn any income. They don't really have any income. So they're not paying income taxes the same way for the, equal to the amount of money that they have because mm -hmm. it's all tied up in stocks and things like that. So they're trying to find a way to get at this. What I want to caution everybody about, because it was a, talked about a lot on the news this week, um, is and that's the way it's portrayed, mm -hmm. is this is a way to get at that money that these millionaires and billionaires are, are hiding. Sure. Um, the, what I just want everybody to think about is, yeah, that's always where it starts. You're talking mm -hmm. about making a new way to tax people. Um, and that's... Anytime you come up with a new way to tax people, and it always starts with the big guys, it will roll down to everybody. Yeah. Um, and 
the, just think about owning a stock and then having to sell that stock to pay the tax on it. Yeah. Because current, that's what you're looking at yeah. here. A current, our, our current uh, income tax started with a 1% tax on the wealthiest of the wealthy Americans. Yeah. And look at where we are now. Um, now we all pay a third yeah. of our income. Exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, here's another thing to, um, to think about in terms of these wealth taxes is um, when they purchased that stock. Yeah. Did they pay taxes on the income that they earned that they used to purchase the stock? <laughs> well, I'm sure they did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's so a good point. I didn't, even, I, didn't even, I didn't even consider that. So it's double tax. It's our, yeah. yeah. I mean, most of these people didn't just inherit a bunch of money. Besides, there's a huge inheritance tax. So even if that oh, was yeah. the case, it's not like they yeah. got away without paying any taxes. Exactly. Um, but most of these people earned income for a period of time, uh, generated revenue with their companies that they paid taxes on and so forth, yeah. um, that they once they accumulated enough wealth through their income, um, they started doing these other things. Yeah. But they've already paid taxes on the wealth that they used to to purchase this stuff in the first place. Yeah. Well, the news is really pushing this as a as a big us versus them. Like that's really the the. Um, and I'll say this too. So it doesn't look like this legislation is going to get through. But the only reason it's not going to get through is because Joe Manchin is voting against it. Yeah. Um, if it wasn't for that, which, like I said, I'm, you know, believe, feel how you feel about him. But if it wasn't for that, this would have a chance. Yeah. Well, you know? um, the, the concern should be that government is always looking for another way of stealing from you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because government feels like it needs to get involved in more and more. And while they're talking about uh, taking wealth from Americans who earned that wealth over time um, through innovation and uh, providing the public with something that they desired, yeah. um, the they're also giving uh, you know billions of dollars to Ukraine, direct aid to Ukraine. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, why don't you not pay them? Maybe right. you wouldn't need my money if you stopped paying everybody else. Oh yeah, um, so. and uh, yeah, it's it's just a matter of uh, a growing government, and that the growing government is going to continue to try and find more sources of wealth that it can that it can pilfer, yeah, um, plunder. It, it's going to continue yeah. to try and plunder its people so that it can it can expand itself. Exactly. Yeah. So. Just something for everybody to be on the lookout for, though. Mm -hmm. Like I say, something else, something else on the radar. Well, I mean, that's actually something um, I am planning on making a sale soon, hopefully soon, um, that will give me a little bit of a, a capital windfall. Yeah. All right. Um, and the question is, what do I do with it? Because there's no place I can put it, really, that it's safe. Mm-mm. Um, I, there's no sense in just putting it into a savings account or something like that. Yeah, uh, you're getting nothing on that. Or, you know, or a CD or, uh, you know, anything like that. Yeah. Um, any, any kind of interest bearing account because, um, inflation is far outstrips any kind of interest oh, rates yeah. that I can get. Um, and, uh, you know, the stock market is a place where you can make money, but it's very risky. It's, yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and I'm not sure that I'm enough of a player. Like I, I will probably take a portion of that to oh, start yeah. playing around it's with it again. Work. Yeah. But um, but I, you know, I'm certainly not enough of a player to feel confident, like just putting that money into the stock market, where I can get real returns, yeah. but I can get real losses too. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, gold is something like that's always pretty reliable. But I don't want to spend that entire sum buying up gold. Yeah. Bitcoin, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's iffy too. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, like, what do you do with it? Um, yeah. I mean, ideally, what I would do is uh, I would use the proceeds from this sale of property to buy more property. Yeah, but prices are the prices so are really crazy. high, which is yeah. why I'm selling. Yeah. But I want to hang on to this money for some time so that I can buy more property when the prices go down again. Which they will. Which they will. But how long yeah and in that time how much of my um my money gets inflated away yeah like how do i protect that wealth to the point where i can use it yeah 
or so, where I, where I want to use it. Yeah. yeah, it's a fair question, one that I definitely don't have an answer to. Yeah, I mean, I have. I mean, some I would ideas, tell you, I, just, I, would, I would tell you to buy guns and ammo, but <laughs> those things don't seem to depreciate. <laughs> no, that's also true, but um, I don't know. If I have some of those things already. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that's that's yeah. my go-to answer for investing. <laughs> yeah. So. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, you're certainly better off with things than cash. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Long I just as... don't know. Yeah, I just don't know. All right. Well, that's, a. Uh, um, yeah. If anybody has any ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's listening. Michael at the Liberty Mike dot com. You can always email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike dot com. Um, and, uh, you know, if you want to continue telling me how I'm an apologist for Putin, uh, you can keep sending them to that email too. Um, <laughs> all right. So I guess we'll wrap up there. So next week we'll have more on Will Smith than right. Chris Rock. Right. Once I get some research done, <laughs> yeah, really, do some, do some experimentation. Yeah. Really going to, really going really gonna to get in, pale. dig into the numbers. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. that. Yeah. I, well, I'll be looking forward to it. I yeah. can't wait. Um, all right. Well, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad that you will. Yeah. And hopefully other people out there will as well. Absolutely. And, and we'll try not to disappoint. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so yeah, we expect to be back here in a week. Uh, in the meantime, follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, um, like, and share, uh, tell your friends, um, comment, uh, reviews, like all of these things help us, Absolutely. Um, help us get the word out. And, uh, yeah, I suppose that's that's all the things. That's right? all the things. That's all the things. You can always email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike dot com. Um, and that's uh, the website, by the way, the Liberty Mike dot com. You can visit there as well. Um, once I get that letter typed up, uh, I will try and find a way to make it available. I'm sure there's a way I can set it up to m make it like a downloadable PDF or Word document so you can make changes yeah. so you can adjust it to personalize it yeah. yeah um and who you're sending it to yeah uh, you know um so i don't know i'll talk to somebody that knows how to do that kind of thing <laughs> and figure it out because uh, you know if you're doing a letter writing campaign need as many want, letters yeah, written as possible exactly <laughs> and and this will be easy like worst case scenario i'll post it up there you can copy and paste change the things that you want to change absolutely yeah um and so, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be here next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm -hmm.